Good evening. So, Mr. Jacoy? Yes, Jacoy. Where's the name, where's the name originate from? Uh, my mom made it up. So, yeah, my mom in high school, she had a friend named Shakoya. Yeah. And my mom's Caribbean. So, I guess, you know, the, the idea of Ja, J A H, it, it comes from Ja Selassie from the Rastafarian uh, community and, and uh, Koi from like the real McCoy. <laughs> yeah. do, do you know what I, what I found about your journey so far is mm-hmm. it's inspiring. I think looking back on it, even though you're at the beginning of this portion of your career, you know, can you like take us back to actually even the role that your grandma played into you actually having the perseverance to actually want to go into the music industry? Yeah, I mean, well, I've, I've, I've always wanted to do music and it was something that I wanted to do really young. You know, I've always wanted to be in entertainment. I started out wanting to do like acting, then dancing, and then, you know, eventually music came into play. And it was one of those things where it's like, you know, it was tough to have my family support because it was almost like unrealistic to be a part of like entertainment. It's like, you know, very few people get picked to be a part of entertainment. It's like, you know, you have to really bring something to the table that makes you stand out. And so it's like, you know, I was working myself up for the, for the most part over the years, like, you know, trying to craft my art, my artistry and, and master my craft, you know? And so it's like, when, when we do what we're doing, we're doing it well and we're doing it to the best of our abilities, you know? And so I'm, I'm, my grandma, you know, I was living with her before going out to LA like California and when I went out there it's like I didn't have any game plans you know I didn't have any game plans it's like I was at my grandma's house two years living there two years after be, grad, like finishing high school and I was just like you know still trying to figure it out I wasn't sure I didn't have any I didn't have any idea like of how I was going to get myself into entertainment because that's what I wanted to do and I was just like you know what I want to do is not here like I can't do it right in my space and what I want to get or want to want to achieve is not an arm's reach you know so it's like I have to really physically get out there to go and you know make things happen and it's like my grandma she got tired of seeing me around the house she's like you know you need to go out and do something you know it's like stop sitting over here hoping that something happens go and do it and I had one homie hit me up on Twitter that I've known for a while but we just never met in real life before and he was always like you know if you ever want to come out to LA like you got a place to stay like you know come crash with me I was like all right cool so the next day I was gone I didn't tell anybody else going I never told my grandma's when I was gone I was out and I just left were you nervous you uh I was I was anxious I was anxious because I was like you know it's like I could be at home right now stay in my comfort zone or I can go out and see something you know see different stuff so I went out there I knew I had a place to stay all I really needed was like a roof over my head you know and then I, I just figure out how to eat food from there. I, was, I didn't really have any plan, you know? So I was just like, let's just go out there, see what happens. And for the most part, if anything, like, you know, if nothing works out, I could just go home, you know? And so I went out there, and within like five days within being out there, Jaden Smith reaches out to me. And so I was like, it was crazy. Like, it was so surreal, the way things were like coming into place just by being in that environment, you know? And so like the project for Water, it just taps into like my, my tail as a Toronto kid trying to chase his dreams and just going out to California to like, you know, just dive into the opportunities that there are out there. And so when, when I got out there, Jaden reaches out, uh, I made a bunch of relationships like, you know, that I'm that like, you know, are like family to me now. You know, I have people that are around me that are like family. It's like, you know, so much has, has grown since then. And it's like the project just taps into like, you know, who I am as an artist, what I represent. And, and what it is that I want to bring to the table as an upcoming new artist, you know? So like I, I tap into a lot of different genres and I never like to hold back in terms of expressing myself, you know? So it's like I, I've eliminated genres, in my head at least. You know, I got rid of R&B, I got rid of dancehall, I got rid of country, I got rid of house. It's like all in my head, music is good music, you know what I'm saying? So here I am now, you know, a couple years later, and it's like I have my project, Foreign Water Out. California Heaven, the lead single featuring Schoolboy Q. It's like, it has a hip, it's like R&B hip hop collaboration that has a, a bit of reggae mix in the vibe. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I wanna bring that freshness to music. I wanna bring what it means to be a new artist. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, here we are now making this great music and I just wanna spread that positive energy to the crowd. You know what I'm saying? I'm on tour with Kehlani. 
We've been like four months together, which is like massive. It's a long time to be on tour. <laughs> and I've never been on tour before, so this is my first tour and I'm super excited about it, you know? So, like, I'm just, I'm so stoked right now. And, you know, the project, For Water, uh, I'm just tapping into like the many different relationships that I've gone through and, you know, the, the many different things that I've come across in terms of environment. You know, when I went out to California, I was in a space that was so different for me. It's like, being from Toronto, I'm, I'm growing up like in the city, skyscrapers everywhere. And then I go out to California and it's like, everything is pretty spread out. There's no like tall buildings, but there's like mountains everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's this new space that I'm, I'm absorbing and I'm being inspired by. So that's why it's like, you know, the foreign water comes from me being a, a foreigner to California. And then also, you know, a lot of people say, you know, when I tell them I'm from Toronto, the, the one thing that they say to me is like, there must be something in the water. You know, with all the artists coming out, so it's like, you know, I wanted to deliver that foreign water. What is the LA bubble like? Because it feels like there seems to be almost like everyone is fast-paced, everyone... It's a bit superficial, some people say. Yeah. How did you deal with that type of culture clash? Uh, I didn't... I mean, for the... F I like, I, I... I've learned over the past, like, you know, course of time being in LA how to separate the real from the fake. And it's tough sometimes because we come across the real and fake all the time. You know, it's like people sometimes they have hidden agendas, you know, and, and, and we, make, we, we may take their approach to us to be genuine because like when you meet somebody for the first time, you have no reason to doubt them. You have no reason to think anything negative. It's just like, you know, you give them the benefit of the doubt because it's like, I'm one of those people that have faith in humanity. You know, it's now we have social media that like, I guess, brings everybody to a state of feeling like nobody is sane. Everybody is like insane, you know? But it's like, there are people out there like you and I that, you know, we're able to have conversations and hang out and, and be personable, you know? We can, we can express ourselves in a way that doesn't necessarily have to be the way society says we have to. It's like, we just have our own way of doing it. And, and while being in LA, you know, there was a bunch of times where I felt like relationships were genuine, but they really weren't, you know? It's and it's like, broken. Pardon? It's almost like growing pains. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like it's just it's part of all all part of the like the growing process. You know, the learning of of lessons in life, and you know, it helps us grow at the end of the day. Yeah, we do grow from it. It's like we, we, without trial and error, we'll never really be who we're gonna be. You know. Don Big. Yes. Talk, talk me through that. Um, again, one of my favorite tracks. Thank you. Um, Walk me through that conceptually and also what the studio session was like yeah. recording it. See that, see that taps into the same thing. That, that, that record actually is um, a reflection of that same uh, situation of like, you know, separating the real from the fake. It's like a lot of genuine relationships that I thought I had were not really. And so it was like, you know, there were some people that I thought were going to be around and they, and they didn't necessarily, you know, make it this far with me. And so it's like, I allocated like, you know, I, I was in a state for uh, like, cause when I went out to LA, I made a lot of new friends and it's like, I wanted us all to grow, I wanted us all to be together. And because everything was, it felt genuine, it felt real and fun. You know, we're all young doing what we love. And it's like, you know, I guess things fell out certain, some places and it was just tough because I felt like, you know, if something does mean something to you, you're able to like work it out so that it does not like, you know, have to be rubbish. It doesn't have to go away, you know, and don't beg just taps into, you know, a, a, all, a lot of the relationships that I've been in. It's where it's like, it's like sometimes we get attached to something, right? Because it's always around us. And then it's like when it gets, when it's like taken away from us, we almost feel devastated or like, you know, uneasy because we're so used to that comfort and now it's not there. And, be, and don't beg, I'm just tapping into that same situation where it's like, you know, I don't have to beg for it. If it's gonna be there, it's gonna be there, you know? So that's why I say, don't beg for love. It's like, the truth will set you free. It was empowering, because when I heard it, I was listening to it, I was like, it showed vulnerability, mm -hmm. and then it also showed like, the other side, like, well, if that's where you are with it, I, I'm fine with it now. Like, mm -hmm. you, you, not you played yourself, but you showed your hand. Yeah. Um, is it therapeutic when you make a record like that after it's done? And, and then also, when it goes out, do the people who you're kind of like um, inspired to write a song by, do they reach out at all after they hear the song? Or how does that uh, work? It's interesting. You know, I've had a lot of people 
that you know left i've had them come back oh, for sure. and it's like That's you know yeah you know as as think as things progress i find it that like people that weren't necessarily down are trying to be now and i'm like me i'm i'm a very open person and i'm i'm very like you know I believe in second chances because I'm not perfect, right? I, I'm always going to make mistakes and so are other people. And so it's like I always feel like second chances are necessary because it could potentially bring bring something special to light. It's like, you know, you never know what could have happened if you didn't give it a shot. And so I look at it as, I look at it as, you know, if somebody does try to come back, I mean, I've had many people come. It's like, I don't, I don't mind it too much. But it's like I know I know where I stand and I, I, I know what role I play and, and I'm just right now I'm like tunnel vision. Yeah. You know, it's like I have the people that are around me and the people that I love it and, and support hundred percent and the people that support me hundred percent and that's really all that I need. Regrets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what, no regrets? No regrets. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about that real quick again. Tell me a bit about that conception. So that's like a spin off of the same thing. So it's like, you know, people when I got into the, a lot of those relationships that I felt were ungenuine it's like, you know, I just want to sing about love. I just want to be in love with life, myself, my family, my friends, and everything that's going on around me, my career. You know, it's like, I want to, I want to, I want to focus on those things and I want to sing about them, yeah. you know, in a positive light. I want to bring that light back to music because I feel like right now music is in a very dark place. It's psychedelic, it's dark, it's very, it's going to, it's going somewhere where I don't think many people like the 90s or the 80s were raised upon. No, I mean, it's like a lot of the music that I grew up listening to early 2000s to like late 90s, it all, like all the love songs, they had meaning, they had a story, it had like so much that they touched on that till today I could play that record and it'd be like fresh to me. I don't know, I feel like right now people are making music because there's like, they have access to internet and access to, you know, all the softwares that they could create on. And so it's like, it's not really genuine. It's just because somebody wants to go viral and be popular online. You know, there's no, there's no, it's not genuine anymore. And so we're just locking in the idea of, you know, being, being, bring the fresh new, like, you know, artists that we are and, 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 and bring that and, and bring that, that, that same feeling that music gave me growing up. You know, it's like my favorite artist, my favorite song, like, let's say artist, but my favorite song of this generation, like our generation. Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud. Such a beautiful song. Like, oh my gosh, like the, I can't believe that song was created now. Like that song, it sounds like it could have been like, you know, Stevie Wonder could have done that record or like Prince even, you know, somebody like, it's very tasteful. And, and you know, the best part about the records growing up that I listened to is like, they were always wedding worthy. You know what I'm saying? That's the, like, that song right there. It's like, I want to play that song on my wedding. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we don't hear records like that anymore. It's like, almost, it's like almost everybody is scared to fall in love. So with no regrets, I want to bring it back. I want to, I want to let everybody know that we don't have to sing about war. We don't have to sing about like, you know, being against each other. We could sing about being united. United we stand, divided we fall, I feel. You know, and it's like there's less unity and, 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 and more, you know, all this other stuff that's unimportant. So it's like, you know, even tapping into some of the love songs that we have today, they're not really about love, they're like one night stands. You know? I mean, so, I mean the vibe, I'm sorry, the vibe yeah. is that you're still very culturally aware. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I feel like even where we are today, if we're just taking music as it is, mm -hmm. there's no real hope for the future generation. And it's trying to hold on to some of the parts that were good, mm -hmm. that came before us, and just trying to retain them, as well as adding a bit of a new flavor. Exactly. But within that, how, how do your family now feel about your success because you're traveling overseas mm. i mean i'm sure there must be like cousins out of the woodwork and like hey like you know yeah. but how has your family reacted to your all my family's been nothing but supportive nothing but supportive i mean my mom calls me every day so super dope you know and it, it's it's amazing to see like how much things have grown and it's like you know it's like at first my family was a little on the fence about everything because i was still chasing my dreams and i still am i still like every day i'm still chasing my dream you know and it's like, 
when 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 we were still starting everything it was hard to have support because it's like everybody wanted me to do the regular thing go to school study you know and then find a job after but it's like that i felt like that wasn't for me and so because everybody sees that i have followed my own vision and my own dreams they're very supportive of that and they 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 like they totally respect it that journey because i know when you go away from like the educational route yeah self-doubt yeah. At what point did it ever kick in, if at all? Just, just self-doubt, what time did that probably kick in when you decided, I'm going to follow my dream and there's not really anyone else, probably my family, who's made it yeah. this far in this career? Uh, self-doubt just pretty much started, like, just before leaving to LA the first time. You know, I was, like, I was a little, I was becoming on the fence about everything. I was, like, nothing's happening, you know. It was, like, at the time, too, I only had songs on SoundCloud. So I was, like... I was just putting records out on SoundCloud, but I had like a bit of attention on there, you know, quite a few streams. But it just, it felt like it wasn't enough, you know, I wasn't doing shows, I wasn't meeting anybody, I was just at my house, just like, you know. And I'm, I literally told myself that I was going to stop making music. I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done past here. Like, that's, that's, that's how low it felt like that, you know. And I tell anybody this, I, this is something that I tell anybody. It's like, when you start feeling, when you start feeling like you've reached the edge of, of, of where you can go, that's exactly when things are gonna start happening. That's exactly when. But it's like, you gotta like have that, you gotta be able to still push. So it's like, if I'm hanging from a cliff, it's like, I don't wanna fall down. I wanna, I wanna like use all my strength, all the strength, even till the end. You know what I'm saying? Even till like my, my muscles can't hold me no more. That's when I know that someone is gonna come and pick me up. Not somebody even, just like even myself, God per se, you know, a higher power is going to like give me the strength to keep going. So maybe that's inspiring. Because like, look at it. No struggle, no gain. You know what I'm saying? It's like if, if everything is all happening, there's nothing really to gain. It's, you're already getting everything. But when you struggle, you go through the struggles and you understand the struggle, that's when there's something to gain. Because when you, gain, when you finally gain what it is that you've been working towards, You'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it more. You'll be more humble, you know? And that's, that's where I am. I'm, I'm so humble right now. I'm so hungry to keep going. It's like we got this tour. I never thought I'd be on this tour, the world tour, you know? And now we're going for like half of the whole year. Like the year just started and we we'll are doing this tour until the end of June. And I'm excited. This is dope. Kelani's awesome. Nothing but straight love for Kelani. Big up Kelani and the whole clique. You already know what time it is. Tsunami Mop. We're out here in London right now, wilding out. <laughs> and, and lastly, um, why should people go and pick up your new project? Why? Yeah. Yo, the thing is fresh, you know. <laughs> the thing is blessed. Yo, Foreign Water is out right now. California Heaven featuring Schoolboy Q is the lead single. That's the tunes. You know what time it is. Toronto is in London right now. Second home. Hey, what's up? Your boy Jacoy right now. We're at the O2 Shepherds Bush Empire. Tonight, live, baby. Say no more. Big up. <laughs>